Now, when you log into EVNG for the first time, you're confronted with some options, a username, a password, but then there's a dropdown. And in that dropdown, we've got three options, the native console, the HTML5 console, and the HTML desktop. Beyond that, once we get logged in, there's different ways that we access the nodes themselves. They have consoles. So by the end of this video, we'll understand what all of those consoles do and how we can build an environment that's best for you to lab and study as well as in your business. Let's get going. So what we're focusing on on this video is right here on the screen, the consoles. There are actually three different ways that we can access EVNG and interact with all of the different devices and nodes that we deploy within our topology, within our labs. So let's start off with the HTML5 console because that's the most basic one and that's the one that we're going to be using by default. Check it out, here's what we do. We'll just log in with our credentials and it takes me into the lab. Now here in the lab, we again have logged in using HTML5. I'm gonna write this here and we're using the HTML5 console. The other options are HTML5 desktop and the native console. I'm writing these here because when you see how the HTML5 console works, that will set up and compare and contrast how the other two work. So let me click on my GUI server right here, and this is gonna bring up something that's pretty important, and we can see this right here, the console itself. How does EVNG attempt to connect into the GUI server. In our case, it's going to be using the remote desktop protocol. That's how this little GUI server is designed to work. And we can see here, we've got choices like Telnet, VNC, or RDP. And when we choose RDP, that brings up the actual front end of that GUI server. Now, if I click cancel here, we'll take a look at OpenVAS. If I choose edit, it's default to RDP, but OpenVAS isn't configured for that. So I'll change it to Telnet and click save. Then I even have a Windows 10 desktop PC set up here, and it's set to be a console of VNC. Lastly, I have my R1 router that I'll also click edit here, and you'll notice that configuration isn't even here, and that's because network devices by default are accessed by EVNG using Telnet. So let's click on each one of these items here, right click and choose start selected. We'll give them just a moment to boot up, and once they're all shining blue at me, we'll give them a click and see what happens. See, we already hit you with a lot of information because understanding how these consoles work and how they differ from each other is very, very important. So check this out. When I actually click on the R1 console here, look what happens. Remember, the default behavior for R1 is Telnet, meaning EVNG, the actual virtual machine that we deployed itself, is going to be using Telnet to access the console of R1. So if I press enter a few times, now I'm on the console of R1, but what has really happened here? What's really gone on under the hood? You see, we chose HTML5 console. So here's our computer right here, and we logged in to EVNG. I'm gonna write Eve right here. And within EVNG, we have our R1 router. So our web browser sees EVNG, and it sees the topology, and it sees the router. And because we chose the HTML5 console, when we click on the R1 router, Eve launches a new little mini browser, this guy right here within our HTML console, and it telnets into that router. So we have an HTML5 instance brought up. That's what we're looking at right here, the entire topology. And then we have a second HTML5 instance brought up here that is telnetted into that R1 router. This is the idea behind the HTML5 consoles, that we can click on these devices, like OpenVAS here, where I can type in ifconfig and see the actual terminal session here. So now I have an HTML5 session open here and an HTML5 session open here. And these were connected in using Telnet. And this, so we're gonna write Telnet over here. But we also mentioned that we had a Windows 10 session that we could connect into using VNC. So I'll click on that. And now my desktop computer has an HTML5 session using leveraging the VNC protocol to access this Windows 10 machine. And then if I move some things around here, we'll actually get to see the GUI server here. Let's bring this one up. This one was using remote desktop protocol. So I've got an HTML5 session here using RDP. Do you see the entire point of the HTML console that I'm trying to drive at here? With the HTML5 console selected, the moment we log in, 
I can actually click log out just to show it here. Here's HTML5 console. The idea is that we can launch consoles to all of our devices, regardless of what protocols needed to access them, directly from within EVENG. Our computer now has a session into the EVENG front end. This is where our entire topology is. But it also has a session into the router, which is using Telnet. It has a session into the OpenVAS server using Telnet. It has a session into my Windows 10 machine that I have in here, which was using VNC. And I have a session into my little GUI server here, which was using RDP. All of these sessions are initiated by my computer, even though they're contained within my HTML5 web browser. Now, would it be too cliche for me to say, but wait, there's more? Because with the HTML5 console, guess what? There is. We actually have a very simple thing and a very powerful thing that we can do, which is copy and paste text between our containers and our local computer. Check this out. Here I've got my Docker container here, which we've already talked about a little bit in the console video, and we said that this is using the remote desktop protocol behind the scenes. If I right-click on my little test document here and I choose Open with Pluma, there's the text right here that says From Docker. Let me give this a right-click and copy. Now down here on my local computer, I'm going to launch Notepad, and in Notepad, I'll right-click and paste. Check it out. There you go. We can actually copy and paste between these. Now on my desktop, you can see I've got this new document right here called newdocument.txt. I'll just bring it up, and it says from desktop. I'll right-click on this and copy. We'll jump back to my HTML5 console. I'll press enter a couple times and check this out. I'll right click and paste. Look at that from desktop. Because we're using the RDP Docker container here, we now have the ability to shift between them. We can copy from our RDP container here and out to a notepad or from our local notepad back into the container. And for our Windows 10 PCs, recall that that's going to be using the VNC terminal and a very fancy way that we can actually manipulate what goes on in our HTML5 console is we can hold Control, Alt, and Shift. Check this out. This actually brings up a menu where we can alter any of these HTML5 consoles and what's going on here. This is pretty fancy because we can see things like sharing the connection. We can see what's on my computer's clipboard right now. If we're coming from a mobile device, we can see the input methods where we can emulate a keyboard or even use an on-screen keyboard. The same thing goes for the mouse as well as the display. At the very top, we also see this share button here where we can click this device and check this out. It generates a URL where we can open up this console for other people to use. So they can click on this and we can share our screens within each other. To hide this menu, we'll just hit Control alt shift one more time and if i do control shift to bring it back up we can see again that my clipboard came from this docker container over here from docker so it's a really fancy way of managing how we interact with the html5 console with just that control alt shift so that sets up what the html5 console is all about it's all about containing each of the consoles of all of your nodes within the evng browser experience itself now if i log out check this out we're going to change this to HTML5 desktop and sign back in, and you'll be able to see how drastically different this looks and feels. Do you see what's happening here? Instead of taking us into the EVENG front end, what it's done, here's our computer, what it's actually done is it's taken us into a GUI server. And now we can securely access EVNG from the web browser within that GUI server. What's the use case for this? Well, you may be thinking like, why, why do this in the first place? Because now check this out. Do you, see, do you see what I've done here? I've gotten logged in. I've got my topology all brought up here from within the web browser itself. The idea is that we now have one connection from my desktop, one secure connection using HTTPS. And then this little GUI desktop back here, the one that we logged into, all of this space that's going on, is used to log into Eve, and it can be the one to manage all the connections to Telnet, RDP, VNC, and so on. The idea is now I don't have all of these connections happening right here, like this, using sometimes unencrypted protocols. The real production use case for this is that I may actually recreate my production environment. I may actually recreate my production servers, switches, routers, and so on, and firewalls. And rather than using my desktop to use Telnet to connect into them, which may actually contain sensitive information, 
I can have one secure connection into this desktop experience, and then it leverages internal connections into Eve and to those routers right there. So all of my desktop workers who want to use EVENG can use the secure encrypted HTTPS protocol to jump into this HTML desktop. And then from there, they can use that to jump into the router switches, firewalls, servers, and consoles, and everything like that. Now, there's one last console that we need to talk about, and it's probably my most exciting and favorite one. Let's close some tabs here. Let's actually just close this tab all the way out. I'll get back to the sign-in of EVENG, and now I'm going to be using the native console. If you followed along and you installed the client tools for Windows, like we talked about in the previous videos as part of this playlist, you are probably well in tune with what the native console does. The native console allows us to use our native applications to access the consoles of these devices. So now that I'm signed in here, when I want to launch the console of R1, remember that what EVENG is doing is it's exposing a Telnet link to EVENG's IP address and then a random port that it assigned for R1. This could be something like 65535. What the client tools did for us is it set our default Telnet application to be something like secure CRT. So when I click on R1, look at that. Now I'm on the console of R1 and I have all of my favorite tools here, like syntax highlighting and all of that good stuff that I've built into secure CRT ready to rock and roll for me. I also can use something like Ultra VNC to access my Windows 10 application. See, this came part of the client packages as well. So now I can access my Windows 10 device using the VNC protocol in my built-in VNC application. I'll open up the RDP session to the GUI server here, and it's asking me to connect to the EVE desktop. I'll click OK. We can expand it out and get a better resolution. And look at that. You can kind of see right here how this works. This IP address is the IP address of my EVNG session. But when I clicked on it, it linked to RDP colon slash slash, in this case, 10, 10, 21, 28 colon 57367, the random port that it generated in order to forward in to this Eve GUI server. So recapping the three types of consoles that we have available to us, we have the HTML5 console, which allows us to open up all of these console sessions to our devices within the EVNG web browser experience, but it still is exposing our computer to connect into each one of those devices. We then have the HTML5 desktop experience, which allows us to have only one secure connection into a jump box effectively. And then from there, it can connect into the EVNG experiences. This is great for when you're trying to recreate your production environment, and that way you need to have a secure way to access those devices and the configurations that you have. Lastly, we have the native console, which is awesome for people who are trying to lab on their own time, and they wanna leverage their own tools like Putty, Secure CRT, their own local RDP app, or even Ultra VNC. So that's what the different consoles do. Thanks for stopping by, y'all. I'll see you in the next one.